So today's topic, does water hydrate or does it moisturize? Does it do both? Does it do neither? Um, and we'll talk about that. How does that relate to skin? And how does that, I'm not gonna talk so much today about how it relates to your nails, um, but water is incredibly, it is the most dangerous chemical to your nail plate. So, uh, and it's also not too great for, for your skin as you are gonna discover. So the first place I went was the dictionary. And I was like, okay, what is hydrate? Well, a hydrate actually is a noun and a verb. So um, it can be a thing. It can be as a noun. It's a compound formed by the union of water with some other substance. And then it can also be used as a verb. So it and the verb is to cause or take up or combine with water or the elements of water. And so this is why things can get really confusing of whether things are actually hydrating or moisturizing. And I'll be honest, I don't, I don't know how it works with other languages and countries, but um, it, yeah, the English language can be very, very weird. All right, then I went to moisturize. So just what is moisturizing? Well, it is not a noun, it is only a verb, and it means to add moisture to. And moisture is, as we know, water. But water is really good, as you'll learn. It's really good on the inside, not so great on the outside. Okay, so what are we talking about today? 20 square feet. The skin has um, is our largest organ of the body and has a total area of about 20 square feet. I didn't measure my bathroom, but you know, it's like, what is 20 square feet in your house? It's a lot. It's a lot of surface area. The skin also protects us from microbes and the elements and it helps regulate your body temperature and it permits the sensations of touch, heat, and cold. So your skin has a big, big job. And besides needing to protect all of our insides, it needs to sort of be tough on the outside for everything that we touch and we do. So this is why um, we can find that some areas of our skin get tough, and that's because of all of the work that we're asking our skin to do as well. Okay, so the skin has three layers. I'm gonna go, here's your little science thing today. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, some of you had science back in primary school, middle school, but the skin has three different layers and there's all kinds of stuff going on in there. And the first layer is the epidermis, then the middle section is the dermis, and then the lower area is the hypodermis. So. Let's talk a little bit about a little bit more about those. So this upper area here is the epidermis, and it's got a few layers, um, and most of it, you know, the bottom portion is alive, and then the top portion is all of the skin cells that are getting sloughed off. Um, and then your dermis is this middle section, and it has your veins and your arteries. And that's where the blood supply is coming and um, and then the oxygen, um, the blood cells that have, so let me step back here. So bringing the blood supply to all of the parts of your skin and then taking the, the blood that does not have oxygen in it anymore and sending that back to your heart and your lungs. Okay, and then you also have sebaceous glands and that is what, um, pushes body oil um, or sebum up through your skin. Um, and then of course, we all know about the hair shaft and the, the hair root goes down here. Um, and fun little fact, did you know that every root is continually making three hairs? This is why when you wax <laughs> or when you shave, it seems to grow back so fast and that's true. It's because there's three as that are cycling through. Um, and then your sweat glands are just these little things right here that send up moisture. They're sending out water, okay? And then your hypodermis is this bottom layer with subcutaneous tissue. 
um, and they all have different purposes. Uh, the really interesting thing is if um, when you hear about the different degrees of burns, if you're to burn your skin, a first degree burn is the epider into the epidermis. Um, this is our normal one. If we touch something hot and we get a little small burn, that's usually what we've done. And then um, the epidermis, or sorry, the dermis is a second degree burn. And then if you go all the way through to a third degree burn, you've gone all the way through down and burned away all of your skin. That's why third, third degree burns are so bloody painful. So also another little fun fact is that our lips do not have any sweat glands or oil glands, which is why that skin is so fragile. Okay, so let's talk about body oil a little bit. So it's also called sebum. So our human sebum consists of squalene, esters of, um, sorry, I'm reading this sideways, glycerol, wax, and cholesterol, free cholesterol, and fatty acids. So the triglycerides and fatty acids taken together account for the predominant proportion um, of our sebum and then followed by wax esters and squalene. Okay, here's the magic question. Can skin absorb water? Um, your epidermis is made, so that epidermis is that top layer, it's made of something called stratified squamous epithelium. Say that three times real fast. It is impenetrable, impermeable, uh, impermeable to water. And this is the big reason why showering, swimming, and bathing does not quench your thirst. Okay. I know that sounds really weird. We're like, we know that, but it's, it's, it's an interesting thought. Okay, let's, so let's go back. I talked about how Mother Nature has given us some answers. At the very, very beginning of life, um, we took a 40-week bath. And so uh, how do we keep, how did we keep that, that amniotic fluid from turning us into a prune? And... There's an interesting thing called the vernix caseosa, and it is a greasy cheese-like coating that covers baby's skin during the time in the womb. And it's made up, this is the interesting thing, it's made up of shed skin cells and sebaceous secretions, uh, body oil. Um, and so they've mixed together into this really thick goop. Um, and it might sound a little gross, but the vernix actually serves an important function. It protects your baby's fragile skin from getting pickled by amniotic fluid in utero. Okay, so this is a little sign that Mother Nature gave us a long, long time ago. An interesting fact is that humans are the only animals who new whose newborns are coated in vernix. The way the substance comes from the sebaceous glands or this waxy su substance comes from the sebaceous glands, which can be responsible for skin oils as our little one grows. Um, it also contains shed skin, scales, skin cells. Um, and the vernix also does do double duty as a lubricant, helping your baby slide right out of the birth canal when, um, when, you're, when it's born. All right, so let's talk about a little bit about the power of water because it's an incredibly, incredibly powerful thing. It has the power to give life and it also has the power to destroy. Um, so as you know, my mentor, Doug Shoon, the author of Nail Structure and Product Chemistry, he says water is called the universal solvent because it will dissolve more substances than any other known solvent. Water is a very poor solvent for skin oils while acetone is a good skin oil solvent. All right, so there's a whole bunch of answers right there in terms of our nails and why our um, acetone is such a great solvent for lacquer, but it's also a great solvent for body oil. So we end up with this, uh, kind of this little vicious cycle going on. Um, so then we go, okay, well, Water is not a great solvent in terms of oil. Is soap a solvent? And the answer is no. Um, normally oil and water don't mix, so they separate into different layers. And 
how it works is that the soap breaks up the oil into smaller drops, which then can then mix with the water. And then these drops of oils are suspended in the water. And this is how soap cleans your hands. Um, it causes the drops of grease and dirt to be pulled off of your hands and then suspended in the water. And then these drops are washed away when you rinse your hands. Kind of cool, huh? All right, so remember I was talking about how Mother Nature has taught us all kinds of things, and all we have to do is pay attention. Um, so this is a seriously, seriously dried out hunk of wood. And then this is very dried out paint. Um, and we're going to be talking a lot about things drying out. Um, so dryness in nature, what is that? Okay, well, if things are really dry... Do we just, we add, we can add water, right? Um, technically moisturizing, but what happens if you add too much water? Then you end up with this muddy slurry. But like for ceramics and pottery, we want this com perfect combination of clay and water so that you can manipulate it and have it turned into something. Um, so there is a just right depending on what we're doing but then what happens if we just let it sit evaporation comes through and then takes that moisture right up into the sky and then that gets collected all bonds together and that's what turns into our clouds so i find it really really interesting that we talk about how of hydration dehydration moisturizing um, and so I'm going to show you some examples here of we can rehydrate some things with water. And then there's other things that we can't. Um, so we can't rehydrate dead leaves. Um, and here's a closer version. Isn't that interesting how it actually, if you flip over your palm, um, this leaf looks a whole lot like your own skin. So what do we do about our skin? Is water moisturizing or is it drying? And anybody who's been swimming in a pool knows exactly how you feel when you come out of that pool. It's the You've been soaking in water there and it is not moisturizing. Your skin does not feel better. So what we really, really need is actually water, the ability for our skin to resist water. And that's the importance of our body oil. So what about lotions, though? I mean, the, the world is just filled. It's a plethora of more lotions than what we could possibly use and know what to do with. Um, and, you know, everybody is coming out with new ones. But how do lotions work? Um, the first ingredient is water. And that is the, so when a, a lotion says it's moisturizing, what exactly does that mean? It's pulling water. So when it's starting out as mostly water with some other ingredients that make it thick um, and have that, uh, that consistency that you can spread on your skin. And then a lot of times they're um, filled with humectants. Now a humectant is something that attracts water out of the air. So you're starting with a water-based product and then it's got ingredients that are pulling water to your skin as well. But remember I talked about your skin actually can't absorb water. Water can't go through it. So this water just ends up sitting on top and that's why we feel sticky and slimy. Um, okay, so when we hydrate, we hydrate our body from the inside. But our body is the thing that's doing the moisturizing of our skin. It goes, it takes that water that we are drinking and then it pushes it through your skin. But then we've got evaporation and baths and showers and swimming and all of the other things that we do. Um, so I, 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 I go back to some of this like you can dehydrate an apple, you can dehydrate um, different fruits and vegetables too. And you can then 
rehydrate them by soaking them in water, okay? But we don't ever say that we moisturize the apple, but that's what you're doing. You're putting it in moisture. Um, so I find it really interesting, at least here in the English language, of how we mix and match these words and do we really, really know what they mean? So here's another example. What about like dead leaves? Okay, you can dry out the leaves. You can actually use things like silica to dry out leaves and flowers, um, but you can't moisturize the leaf. It doesn't matter what you do to it. The moisture, um, it, it comes from the inside. You cannot rehydrate a dead leaf. The, that moisture comes from the tree. It comes from within. And once it falls off the tree and it's no longer getting nourished by the tree, it's going to dry out. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how squeaky clean do we need to be? Because as we were, I was talking a little bit earlier is, okay, so our epidermis, that top layer of our skin, it's really important to protect us. Um, and then we go and make sure it's really, really nice and clean. So do we need to be squeaky clean? For our hands, as we know during virus seasons, yes, very, very important to keep those clean because our hands touch everything. Um, and then we're, we do all kinds of interesting things with our hands, especially around our face, and we touch our mouth and our nose and our, our eyes, and then that's how viruses get in. So yes, we definitely want to keep our hands very clean, but do we need to keep our body scrubbed, scrubbed clean and antibacterial and antifungal and all of these things? As you're starting, I'm hoping you're starting to see the answer is no. Um, we don't actually want to be scrubbing everything off. Because remember when I talked about the vernix, um, it's made up of shed skin cells and sebaceous secretions. So that tells us, and it's actually very moisturizing to the infant, and it actually helps keep them warm when they're first born as well. So remember that that epidermis protects and even, even those dead skin cells that are getting sloughed off, they are a part of that protective barrier. That gets me back to, should we scrub our skin so much? And I don't think we need to because you know we love our baths, especially those of us who love to sit and percolate and just luxuriate in all of this wonderful warm water, but we're actually doing kind of like double damage because we're sitting in water and the water's pulling away the oil and then we're also using soaps and that's pulling away the oil. And so then we get out of the bath and we feel super, super dry. So here's another example of how water can do damage, especially wood is such a great one. There's so many things in nature that are so helpful for me with analogies. Um, but you can see that this spoon has had way too much water exposure. And so it's dry and parts of it are starting to crack. But you want to know how you keep wood really, really nice? You protect it with oil. And so you can, and you can actually reverse that other spoon by actually getting a whole bunch of oil back into that wood. So what we want to do is have water resist. We want it to make it so that water just beads up on our skin and we do that with oils, okay? So this is a fun one. Can we actually moisturize our lips? So and, and this is where I get really technical here. Um, if we're going to add moisture to our lips, then what we're actually adding moisture is water. Well, what happens if you lick your lips? Um, it doesn't dry out your lips. S or actually, I'm sorry, licking your lips actually dries them out. It doesn't moisturize them because, you know, your saliva is mostly water. So one would think that that is what's moisturizing and actually it is not. 
And so the purpose of our lip balms is to then protect that really, really fragile skin. And that's why lip balms are so important because since we don't have oil glands and we don't have sweat glands in our lips, that skin is very, very susceptible to damage, especially if we're licking them, then that makes them dry and chapped. Okay, so the lip balms protect from the elements. All right, so we get to what makes your skin healthy. Well, one, we're going to be careful with how much we scrub it, right? But it comes from drinking water. We moisturize it from the inside. And then we need to assist um, your body on the outside. And how do we do that? We do it with something called, this fancy word, called occlusion. So we can, and what does occlude mean? It means to close up or block off. There's different ways that we can, we can do that with our skin. You could literally wrap yourself in saran wrap. That would work. And what that would do is it would create this barrier that then, or I should say kitchen wrap, because uh, a lot of countries don't have saran brand kitchen wrap. Um, and that would actually create this barrier that would make it so that the oil and moisture that your body is pushing through your skin would stay there. It wouldn't evaporate, it wouldn't get washed away, but we'd also sweat and it would just be very, very uncomfortable. So we need to do things that can create that water resistant barrier, but also still feel really, really nice. And the way we do that is actually with oils and waxes. Because, I mean, this is such a great picture. We're wanting that water to just beat up on our skin. This is a big reason why we came up with our products. Um, one, as many of you know, I came up with our oil, Simply Pure, and that was to help our, um, our nails, increase the flexibility of our nails, um, reduce the dryness. And then what ended up happening was, and I think I'm jumping ahead in my presentation here, but what ended up happening was, remember how I was talking about how water can rinse away oil, especially when you combine it with soap. The soap is going to bind with the oil and it's going to make it so that you can rinse it away. Um, and so we, I had my mother create our Simply Sealed Lotion Stick because, and so she added lanolin and beeswax and some different oils that are not in our, in our oil. Um, so that it could create that, um, be an occlusion, as that fancy word, of creating this water-resistant barrier. So this is what I was talking about. Oils are really, really light, and they're easily, easily washed away. And this is another way that um, moisture can be trapped in to, especially this is an example of using a carnauba wax on wood, and it actually traps in that moisture so the wood doesn't get all dried out like that wooden spoon. Okay, so again, I'm coming back to the reason that we have these products is to solve problems. And so our oil actually sort of penetrates into that top surface of your nail plate, or your nail plate and your skin, and it actually creates this water resistant barrier. It keeps water out. And then, but because it's so light, we have our lotion stick that you then put on, on top and that traps in the oil. And, um, and it just makes your skin feel so much better because it's not the oils, I mean, the, the, your natural body oils aren't getting rinsed away. So the final thoughts that I've got for you guys is how do we deal with all of this of like really when we're talking about moisturizing our skin, that comes from the inside. That comes from taking care of yourself and eating well and for sure making sure, as you can tell, hydrating yourself from the inside. And then your body can do the job and hydrate from the inside and then you work on the outside of helping to reduce the oils that are that your body is providing um, reduce those from getting scrubbed away. 